Hi, uh, I'm Nick Kolev, and thank you for joining uh, this episode of, of Startup Bright. Um, this is the time and place we talk all about startups. Um, in this episode, I have invited Hassan Bash um, as our guest. And we have seen Hassan before on Startup Bright uh, more than a year ago, for sure. And I'm so happy to see him again and have this conversation and kind of understand, you know, where he has been, um, how his business has developed or have been affected, has been affected um, by COVID and just kind of have an interesting conversation with a person that already has a business successful and kind of help um us startups um with his mentoring skills hello hassan hi hello how are you Nikolai? i'm good thanks for asking how are you i'm awesome man it's been it's been a long time since we saw each other uh yeah it's like you said it's been a year and a lot has happened a lot a lot of good and a lot of bad <laughs> i can guess yeah <laughs> definitely so um, just to introduce uh, yourself and, and you know your company and what you do, uh, why don't you take a few minutes and explain you know uh, who is Hassan Bash and and what do you do and what kind of services services you you can offer startups and other companies? Absolutely. So again, my name is Hassan Bash, and um, I always like to start with I come from a diverse family, and that's how I got into the world of marketing and understanding the psychology of marketing and from there is understanding also how, what makes people agitate what makes people think to, to take an action uh, because marketing is all psychology uh, before i got into the marketing world i really wanted to understand um, just the mind and how the mind works and how do we as humans actually think and what makes us us in a way? And that got me into understanding how do we create an offer online that really can impact the person that is in their day-to-day -day life that might this service or product could possibly help them and impact them. And that's the journey of me getting to understand exactly who am I and wanting to find my purpose in this world of marketing because I got into marketing because it was a skill set that I wanted to learn so that I can help people with marketing. But I realized in that journey, it was not just marketing that was the problem. Uh, there was a gap. You know, if you listen to this interview, it's going to be completely different than the last interview because there's a complete gap between people spending money on marketing or doing something in marketing. And then there's a complete different aspect of business and systems and efficiency within the business. Um, so I found a big gap in between. And the gap was honestly was efficiency systems, workflows, and an, a clarity of the business owner and what they really want before they get a lead. And they want customers before they like they want right away customers, but they don't have systems in place to accept those customers. They have never understood what exactly is an offer or who is their avatar or persona, the who, before we start burning money on Google ads or Facebook ads. And that took me to, you know what, I think I need to fill this gap and become someone a little bit different than just a marketer. So I got to really study other businesses and I got some data because it's not about me or my processes or my frameworks. No, it's about the data that people are having bottlenecks with. And I got that information and I studied and I got information from other people and I gathered all this information in an organized way and I thought, you know what? People need clarity. They have to have clarity in where they're going. Really have, sit down and have, it's not just the money, it's not just customers. Yes, money is a big factor, but before we get into that, let's understand 
what's behind you. Let's understand how is your energy day to day? How is your efficiency? Do you have systems? How is your productivity? How do you have a team? How do you structure a team? The sales team. Because if I get you leads, does the sale team know how to close and follow up? Do you have a CRM in place that is optimized to talk to these people that come through uh, a lead magnet or come through Google or SEO or content? So before this interview, I sat down and like really what I wanted to, to the question is like, how can I really help these um, startups? And I think is there's a few things that I wrote down based on the data. And I want to just make sure that people understand this and then we can go much deeper on each one. Um, I think one is having the mindset of flow. So what does that mean? Mindset of flow means clarity. That's one. Number two is your health flow. Every single day, are you taking care of your health flow? Whatever that is. Uh, and then product, productivity flow. The productivity flow is systems, is your day-to-day -day life. When do you sleep? When do you wake up? Because all these things will affect, uh, even if you make money, if you need, will affect you at some point in your journey. Um, and then we go into sales and business operations, which is more of the content systems flows and stuff like that. So just these are the things that are very important that we need to first be clarity on, and then we could get deeper. Sorry for the long introduction, but I got inspired by your question. No, this is uh, this is exactly um, you, you know uh, what I was hoping to hear from you uh, because uh, these are um, issues and um, uh, topics that are very relevant to any company and any startup. Um, so this is extremely um, kind of to the heart of everybody that is trying to start a company or even if you have a company, to be honest, you know, what I see a lot of times is just, you know, the lack of clarity and, you know, where, where are we going and, and why? What is our mission? Do we have a mission, right? 100%. Yeah, and, and, and the, the funny thing is that I used to think that, um, you know, defining your mission, your goals and KPIs and all that stuff, I used to think about that like, oh, come on, just, you know, bring me customers and, <laughs> I, you know, I can do my job. But it is so important because, uh, you know, brings clarity to what you're doing. Why are you doing that? You know, and, and how you are affecting um this other people's lives right it's not i mean money is big factor obviously 100 percent. yeah but you know there is big question why you're doing all that and it is um maybe it comes with um you know getting um more uh, mature in your business development uh, when when you when you understand that it is not just about the service, not just about the transaction, that transactional thinking, you know, um, can get you to certain point, right? You can you can advance to certain degree, but after that you're gonna hit a wall, right? One hundred percent. Yeah. And I'm very interested in you know how exactly. Um, you know, you're you're helping um, these companies and startups. But before we we do that, you know, I'm curious. Um, how did you know year 2020 affected you and your business? Okay, so it definitely affected me. I I definitely lost um, uh, a couple client, a dozen of clients uh, that were service based. Uh, definitely service based, and I lost a couple that, and then and I, and I was like, wow, uh, this is really happening. And it was not a, and it was, I was not in a good position, but to be honest, I, I had a good mindset and I had a good vision of exactly what I wanted to do. So I just shifted my, my thought and what I really want to help other businesses, even though I was helping because people didn't have the right budget to spend online, people didn't do. So I, I just, you know, started giving free value 
uh, I started helping a lot of local businesses, a lot of people around my area, a lot of people, friends, um, and started just having conversations. And from there, that got into consulting and coaching. So it pivoted from just agency stuff to now co coaching and consulting based on the foundation. And again, you know, like I told you, like I found the data, like I got so much data from business owners based on what happens when I work with them after I get them leads. Cause it, that's just one thing. Me getting the leads is one thing, but there's so much behind everything else. So I shifted and I got into consulting and coaching and it's not just marketing. It's the, it's the overall arch of marketing and, and business and what's behind it. Because if we don't have a documented process of who is our customer, what are our main project that we want to focus on? What is our main 90 day mark, like 90 day main focus? Where's our 90 day game plan? We have to focus, we, I don't want to have a year goal. No, I want to have 90 days specifically. Uh, goals in 90 days is really effective. It's, it's not too long. And it's not too short. That's one. Because we have four quarters. So that's four different 90 days that are happening. So I got I shifted into that. I started helping people with documenting the process, knowing who the customer is, knowing your process, knowing how to be productive with the team, how to have files and all like because I'll tell you something that people like really put off. For example, like just organizing your files on your computer of where, for example, where your, you know, authority pictures go, where does your authority marketing go, where does your content go, organizing that, how much time does that save you so that when someone asks you, hey, uh, CEO, we need this picture, we need this, we need that, it's easy. It's not like we have to figure it out all the time. So... So organizing from like simple things like that, that make a big difference in flow and efficiency. That is one thing. So got into that and shifted into the consulting and coaching side, found the gap. I said, wow, I, I, I'd rather do this than go back to what I was doing and doing all the work where I'm actually doing a mis disfavor for the business owner because there's no... There's no essence, there's no, uh, there's no clarity. I'd rather fix these problems. And then I have a lot of resources. We definitely could do it for them. But I said, you know what? I wanna be the person in the middle that fixes that problem. Then they can actually either build a team in-house, cost-effective, or hire another agency at the right time. And that's how I shifted into coaching and consulting. And there were some clients that I worked with as an agency, but then I just said, you know what? I just want to focus on this. Uh, if there's an opportunity that I could help someone with the agency and it's the right time, have everything right, then we could do that. So that's how I shifted. All right. So if I am, um, you know, a startup, which I am, <laughs> um, you know, how, how do I approach you and why should I expect, what should I expect to receive from your services and from your coaching? So walk us through an example 90 day plan that, that you had with um, one of your customers, for example, and help, help us understand, you know, in kind of practical terms. Okay. This is Hassan and and I have problems with, you know, not finding leads, um, don't have my, you know, everything is everywhere because that is the normal startup situation. And, you know, I believe what you are uh, talking about and what you're, you're saying um, has also been um, kind of omitted by accelerators and incubators. You know, yes. I myself have been through an, uh, an uh, a incubator uh, program and I have to tell you, you know, you get this information, you know, all the time, you know, you have people with experience oh, with, yeah. um, you know, with uh, companies already built and businesses and they're busy and they, they want to teach you. I'm not saying that they don't, but everything comes in such big volumes and usually it gets to you so quickly that you, as you said, 
you just throw the file somewhere and then you say uh wait a minute where 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 did they put that file exactly and and you spend time and time again trying to figure out you know where your logo is yes. what was that presentation what is the presentation for that specific investor right <laughs> and, and and all things like that so if i am um you know as a startup how do i find you how do i approach you and again if you can walk us through um an example of 90 day yeah, plans absolutely you know um so i think uh one thing that you hit me with is information and it's called information overload with all these courses uh youtube you're looking for things and we have so much like in today's world in the 20 21st century there is so much knowledge that's being shared there is so much knowledge and it's it's a lot and you just you have all these things coming out you and the question is like how do we really study and understand and then navigate what we have just took in digest it and put it in a place that we can always come to uh in school i was you know i was never taught how to really study it, i mean the main part of the study is like go read it memorize it and come to the test ready but we were never learned and how to really um you know capture knowledge or capture information or write specific notes um I can tell you about something similar to mind mapping. I'm not quite sure if you heard of mind mapping before, but just as simple as mind mapping. And mind mapping is a segment of, let's say, for example, yeah, I'm going to put this. You have projects, and each project have a subcategories of that main project. If we're talking about health, then let's go to subcategories and what you got, what you have to do for your health. There's sleep, there's nutrition, there's exercise. And you see how I just broke that down from health to sleep, exercise, nutrition. And, and the school system never taught us how to really learn that. So I had to kind of learn that, read books, understand from this person, this person, that, all, that, that, all these different things. So that's information. So overload, how do we take the information and then implement Take the digest it. Take the time. Take the time. Don't go to another shiny object and learn that thing. Let's take the time to understand it and then implement it. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is, how do we organize our notes on our phone, on our computer, on our iPad? There's so much information out there. So how do we organize our digital life? Because we're just the digital life is just growing. So we should be organized in our digital life. So that's just one way of all these incubators, all these courses is we need to understand how to we digest this. That's one. So if, if someone wants to know about that, just search mind mapping on Google and you understand there's so many different softwares, XMind, uh, Miro, all these other softwares that you can use to mind map something. It's not that difficult, but coming back to what the process looks like, I think I would rather would want to share these topics. And please, if I'm talking you know, in different things, I'm just trying to put the picture all together. So we just talked about getting information and then segmenting it. How do we really actually digest it and then implement it? But going back to us is we really have to understand what, this is based on the DILT model. Uh, and if someone wants to search this, because this is not something that I'm coming up with, it's all the information. I just want to say something. All the information that I'm saying is based on data, is based on information from other people that I'm getting together in an organized way, and I'm sharing it. Because I'm no guru. I'm no special person. I just study, digest it, understand it, come with my theory based on my implementation, based on my conversation with other business owners. That's how I learned this stuff. So coming back to the DILT model, there's a couple things that I want to talk about. Uh, number one is understanding your vision. What are you a part of? Okay, that's really important to understand exactly what are you, what's your vision and what are, you are a part of. Number two is identity. Who are you? 
if you don't know who you are, and if you just say, I am Alex, I am Hassan, whatever that is, you want to do that research consistently because a lot of people say, what is my purpose behind it? And, and the funny part, purpose evolves. Your purpose always evolves. My purpose evolves. And it's, but, but making sure that you're at the right path, that you enjoy what you do, and also enjoy making money from what you do. Because money is really important behind purpose. I don't want you to just go to purpose and you leave money away and you're just like not going to make money. No, it's really important. And then it goes into values and beliefs. What is important for you? The values and beliefs. And then it goes into capabilities, how and what you learn. Again, what do you need to learn to, to actually back up your vision, back up your identity, capabilities? What are the things that you need to do? develop as skill set as a business owner? What are the resources that you need? Again, as a business owner, and if you are an entrepreneur, depending on what you're doing, the question that you need to ask yourself is like, how, it's not about how you should do it. It's about who should you actually hire, depending on the time. Sometimes you need to understand how to do it. Sometimes you need to understand how to learn that skill set until you make enough money to outsource it. Depends on where are you at in the journey. And then it goes into behavior. What will I do differently based on my behavior? So understanding yourself, really understanding yourself. Like your circumstance is, is based on yourself. Your reactions to life, your reactions to people, your conversations with people is based on your behavior and what you say. So I know this is maybe very deep, but I'm just, this is really important and what I want to talk about before I talk about lead magnets, talk about marketing and then, and also your environment, when and where you are. So environment. So just going back to the lot, I'm just recapping this vision, identity, values and beliefs, capabilities, behavior, environment. These are the six ones based on the DELT model. If you want to search that on Google, you can go ahead and do that. But going back to now the 90 day game plan, I'm going back now to come and focus on like, what is the 90 day uh, marketing plan? <laughs> what is that? Well, it's based on three things. It's documenting your process, knowing exactly what are the three projects or five projects you want to focus on. That's one. And then getting into your who, finding out who's your customer, breaking that down. What is your offer? How, what, what traffic source are you going to use? Are you going to do content creation, organic? SEO, what is that? You know, you're not going to do everything only if you have investors that are willing to invest in you so that you can do everything. You have the right team. So that depends. And then we get into um, metrics. So I said documented the process. We have also the second part is uh, knowing your metrics. In sales, it's all about numbers. In marketing, it's also about metrics, key performance indicators, KPIs. And looking at your KPIs, the KPIs that are down, it's the one that you need to work on. So let's say you have a website, you just built it, you don't have traffic. So how do we create traffic? There's organic, there's paid. It goes into more deeper into the tools and tactics. The tools and tactics that we need to understand that we have so that we, again, come back, we take what we wanna learn, sit down, mind map the plan, digest it. So we have strategies based on what we're doing and then we go implement. That's a long answer, man, I know. <laughs> but uh, I hope I kind of summarized it in a way to really understand the information. Again, I am just a messenger. I'm, I'm grabbing data based on what I'm learning from different people and I'm just sending the message. No, this is, this is awesome. You know, you're, you're throwing these little gems here and there. And I, I myself, I believe I will have to um, watch this uh, video <laughs> just for my own benefit you know and and take all these little details and and do my own research and i really uh, like the way you um you structure uh all you do uh, and and you know i'm engineer by you know my background is is engineer and um i always look for um, engineers are on the execution side of things right and I, I'm always looking for something that is uh, well-defined and I can say, you know, um, these are my steps. 
and and the way you talk and the way you explain this uh, works really well um, for me and and kind of my mind really easily can uh, digest and understand you know what what you're saying. So I hope um, this this um, you know little gems that you just shared with us are going to be really helpful for um, our um, startups and you know help us not only um grow but actually understand the reasons we want to grow and the reasons you know why we want to grow uh, so yeah. these are deep questions it's not just practical you know yeah. do step one two three um, yeah I mean, these are these are different things right it's, yeah i mean honestly it's like it's taking a step back and it's not about that it, it is like there is the hustle and there's also like the sale but it's stepping back in a second, t- taking a step back because the competition, yes, there's always competition. Competition is amazing because if there's no competition, there's no like energy around it. So the way we take it, like competition, but to be honest is it's your inner being of what you are a part of. What do you want to become? And it's not about always the outcome, money or this big house or this lifestyle. It's the journey and enjoying the journey and having a lifestyle around it and taking a step back and asking, really working on you. Because I figured, and I had this problem, it's like, it's not, it's not about just the, me working and getting the leads part or me doing that as an agency owner. Me, I had an epiphany. It's like, that is not something that I want to be a part of as just the agency owner or marketer. Because I know for a fact, that there's another gap that I need to fix and finding yourself into that trouble. Like I didn't know that I would be a part of this new part of my epiphany. It took me some time to understand me, understand my behavior, understand what's around me, feedback from people, uh, experience. And it's like, we go through life and we find these um, moments of like, uh uh-huh. Uh huh. And messages come to you. You have to accept them and digest them in the right way, and then go ahead and navigate through them. If that makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Um. And I, I heard somewhere that um. And, you know, I'm listening to a lot of podcasts, of course, and and reading a lot. And it was something that you said about um, teams and building the right teams, which kind of resonate with me. Um. Um, so this guy on this podcast, he said, um, before you hire um, a salesperson, you have to understand the process yourself, right? Because I was in that situation. I was like, okay, I don't really know how to do sales and, and find leads and all that stuff. Uh, so I should hire somebody. Um, but this guy said, okay, if you want to hire a salesperson, you really need to know all the details in the process of, you know, finding a customer and then talking to the customer and closing the deal. Yeah. And when you're ready to optimize this process, now is it is the time when you can hire a salesperson. And in the other thing that he said, <laughs> which which was which was really interesting, he said. Um, if you're ready to hire a salesperson, you should really hire, hire two. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> usually, usually, you know, you, you're on, on very, uh, you know, tight budget, you know, how you barely can afford one person. And, and the guy says, if you're ready to hire one salesperson, you should really hire two. And in the, the argument was uh, really made sense. He said, you want to put them in competition because if you hire one person and, um, you know, you have 10 leads or 10 customers per week, you never know if that is optimal or, or that is what uh, you can achieve. But hiring two, you can now compare, right? You have, you have two instances, you have two data points, right? Um, and you can compare and, and then you, you really know if the process is working, the sales process, the funnels and all that stuff is working. Uh, and you're not dependent 
on the skills of a single person. Yeah. So that was when you said, you know, find the, the right team and, and, and understanding what you want to do. It is really important to understand also the process and what works specifically for that process, right? Yes, 100%. And I think uh, like in that process, you need to accept failure. You need to accept uh, not getting everything right uh, and accepting uh, whatever happens to you because it's a part of the process. You can't, you, you, you can't learn everything. You have to learn through, if you want to learn fast, you got to fail faster, honestly, <laughs> because you, you're not, like all the knowledge, it's, it's, it's really difficult. I mean, Bill Gates and all these people, uh, like Elon Musk, they read a lot of books and they're still learning to understand their thing and what they're doing right now. So what we are like as business owners, there is so much to learn. Um, and I think, like we said, hiring two salespeople, it's, 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 it's a good thing so that you know exactly there's the competition between them also. But also it's like you want to understand probably just 10%, 20% of something. If you're not good at it, it's good for you to outsource it. Again, coming back to how it's not how you should do it. It's who should you talk to to do it sometimes. Uh, but you should also understand it. Because honestly, honestly, sales, it's two things. In my, in, my, in my experience, it's listening and having a regular conversation. That there's no other magic. Like, I, mean, I mean, I know that a lot of other salespeople like have all these hooks and things like that or uh, persuasion skills. But honestly, it's listening. It's like, it's as simple as, you know, what do, when you, like women, when we talk to girls or women, what do they want? One thing, they want you to listen. And that is exactly sales. There's no, there's no magic to it. And that's what I have learned in my experience in sales. It's a conversation. It's not a, let's close the deal. No. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I want to be uh, mindful uh, for our time here. Uh, I know you're a very busy uh, person. Um, tell me, um, you know, what kind of services can you offer to, to startups and, you know, um, how they can find you? So they can find me on my social media, uh, just write Hassan, Hassan Bash and you will find me. Uh, thankfully, there's no like, there's not a lot of Hassan Bashes, so I don't have to go through that problem. So just write Hassan Bash and you'll find me uh, on social media or just on Google. Um, and I mean, it, I don't know if I can help the person that comes to me. It's a conversation that we'll see if I can help the person. Or maybe I could actually send you to another person that can actually help you. Um, so... I could probably help you, but maybe we're not a good fit. It depends. It depends on your journey. It depends on where you're at. It depends on your mindset. And that's how I can actually have a conversation with someone um, that could actually just, I could understand their circumstance and where they're at. And I see if I can help them. And if I can, great. There is different solutions for different things with systems and productivity uh, in business and clarity. But, you know, before we get that, just have a conversation. So if anyone wants to get in contact with me, it's like the services that I offer is the consulting part and the coaching part. And the coaching part is based on me asking questions so that you really realize what you need to do. The consulting part is based on me solving a problem. So I just want to distinguish two things. Coaching is a conversation for me to ask questions, the right questions that will navigate something in you to figure you like, because you know the answer. I just have to ask the right question sometimes. Consulting is me looking at your business. It's like, okay, I need to solve this problem for you. I come with the me solving a problem. Coaching is more towards, it's a discussion and where I'm the messenger and I come in, 
you have these aha moments and you go ahead and implement on them. And it's not about me. It's about the process. It's not about me. It's about the other things that I have absorbed and I'm just a messenger. That's it. I'm no one special. I'm just a messenger. It's not that complicated. <laughs> um, yeah, this is, um, I mean, I'm always impressed when people are humble and they just want to help. Yeah. Um, Hassan, I want to thank you very much for your time and for joining thank us. Thank you. Um, I will put in the um, this episode notes uh, links and uh, details and uh, all these models that we talk about here. <laughs> we uh, talked few, a lot about. <laughs> yeah, a few, few, uh, probably a few links to um, my mind tools and things like that. Absolutely. Uh, Thank you very much for your time. And I'm pretty sure we will have another conversation soon again. 100%. 100%. Thank you so much. And I'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Hassan.